Welcome to Corrective Consciousness episode 259, the podcast where we explore the inanity of pop culture. I am your host, Vise the Bold, and this is Lotus Prince. And Ecologist. And we have another wonderful show here. We are finally getting the move on in our pre-MCU live-action Marvel movies. Um, we keep getting interrupted by all kinds of stuff, um, by, by you know, modern events. Uh, keep interrupting our uh, review of old, old fart topics here, <laughs> but um, we kind of left off with the second Punisher movie, uh, the first being uh, the, the one with Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> <laughs> and the second one being the Thomas Jane one. We haven't gotten to the third one yet, but um, I yeah, uh, do remember the Dolph Lundgren one. I think. Yeah, he kills a lot of ninjas in it, <laughs> like <laughs> a ninjas? lot of ninjas. Mm. Yeah, a lot, a, like, a lot of ninjas like in white. Um, I I love the concept of a ninja in white. Uh, it's like hilarious to me. Like well, here, make the brightest color for sneaking around at night. <laughs> <laughs> you can hide. You can use white as hide to hide as well. Don't worry. Yeah, in a desert, but not like you know, <laughs> in the snow. Yeah, sure. Next but not plain it's, white it's the wall, per- which there is a lot well, of. It's, in the, the, city. it's the per. Well, no, no, it's the perfect disguise because you're expecting a ninja dressed in dark clothing. So <laughs> that's imagine true. your surprise. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. I, I forgot about that. Uh, I, I, you know, we 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 got to get um some snake eater. Uh, kind of thing going on here, you know, where he he, uh, he has all kinds of different camouflage yes. for uh, everything that he does. But uh, yeah, we, we we should talk about um, we we were left off with the, like leading up to this this one a monumental um, uh, a monumental entry in in um, like the Marvel uh, kind of fandom in in general. But um, I believe this is the only Oscar winning uh, pre uh, live a- uh, pre MCU live action um, one. So um, yeah, and I think only one other um, Marvel movie has ever won an Oscar, and that was Black Panther. Um, but uh, yeah, um, Spider Man Two, a a pinnacle of um, pre MCU movies. It is one of the one of the best superhero movies ever made uh, still holds up and is, if you ask me, by far the best one out of that trilogy and probably the entire era. I, it's just so good. It's a, it's a it's like a perfect movie. Yeah, it um, really does stand out. Is that the one with it, the Nickelback soundtrack? I don't know. <laughs> uh, it is the one with Doctor Octopus. Um, it is also the one where, um, like. Spider-Man loses his uh, it, like he he takes his mask off and 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 it, it they do like the realistic thing of he's just a kid so like nobody knows who the hell he is so like I do kind of um, like that yeah 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 he's just like um like who who is this guy and he's he's just trying to save us and he's he's just a kid trying to trying to like have the entire world on his shoulders it has one of the my favorite superhero sequences ever in a live action film, him trying to stop the um, elevated the train, train yeah. is one of the most heart wrenching and wonderful things to, to watch because uh, a superhero trying to do everything in their power and still not being strong enough uh, is like one of the best things you can, you could do to a superhero in terms of drama. Um, and one thing I gotta say I really appreciate about that scene, by the way, is that Doc Ock is just, like, throwing people off the train, and Peter Parker's making a point of shooting web hammocks for them. Like, they're making damn sure yeah. not to let collateral damage, like, kill people, or in this case, intentionally trying to kill people, like, in order to try to just prevent that. Yeah, no, he he's trying to do everything he can to be a good person and the best person, but he has the entire world on his shoulders and he's just one like the strongest person that exists but still not uh, it's not enough um it's not enough like he's the strongest singular person but he can't be everywhere at once he can't he can't stop an elevated train easily um by any stretch of the imagination it's just a really fantastic movie 
Uh, this one, of course, was directed uh, once again by Sam Raimi, one of my favorite directors of all time. Um, and it, this has the best performances out of all of them. Um, you know, uh, uh, Kirsten Dunst, James Franco, and, uh, and and Tobey Maguire are all really great in this. And 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 the guy who plays um, Doc Ock, uh, what's his name, uh, Alfred M- Molina, yeah, and he uh, really looks the part too. Yeah, it has Danny Elfman soundtrack, just like a lot of other great superhero movies. Um, it's just, it, it's top notch. It it, it it probably gets overlooked this day and age because a lot of the MCU movies are really great. But this, this um, I, I, I really love the Tom Holland movies. I think both of them are very, very, uh, a lot of fun. The first one especially. But uh, I I really like this one. Uh, I don't I don't think I could even even the Tom Holland movies top this. It's really really good. Um, uh, Dracologist, have you ever seen this one? Uh, I don't didn't see much. I do remember the very 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 first Spider-Man movies, which were like you know, like eighties, like the, the <laughs> yeah, of like the, the comics. The... Like when I was a little tyke, I saw those mo- saw those movies. Like, well, at least part of them, which was interesting. Yeah, no, those, those early live action efforts. Uh, we 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 went over those in an earlier episode. They're uh, a little special, <laughs> like uh, <laughs> looking back at them. <laughs> um, but yeah, I definitely seek this one out. I mean, uh, uh, and and we wouldn't have the um, the PlayStation Three logo without without Spider Man Two. You you can't forget that. Oh jeez, uh, so. <laughs> I did forget that. It does, it does have that vibe about it, doesn't it? Well, it, it it is also a Sony product. Yeah, for yeah there we so, go. Um, they 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 own that font. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, it also it um before the modern um PS4 Spider Man game, uh, the Spider Man Two video game, it was probably the pinnacle of Spider Man video games. Um, yeah, for and, a and not long only time. that, but even when the PS4 game came out, it was described as being like an upgraded an version of spider-man 2 yeah yeah that's it's been like over it's been like 15 years and people are still talking about that game and, as a definitive spider-man game and they made tons of spider-man games after that too it yeah, nobody like they, on earth talks about spider-man 3 the video game that just wasn't great um and the well, there, there were some decent ones they, they they made the ultimate spider-man game and then you had like the web of shadows game web of and shadows then, i heard was yeah. good i just i never touched it yeah, I mean, th- those games were good, but they weren't as good as Spider-Man 2. And yeah. in capturing uh, what it's like to be Spider-Man and going that, around That's the thing. Like, I don't yeah. know if you remember the Spider-Man 1 video game, but it had Tobey Maguire and Willem Dafoe voicing the respective I, characters. I don't even think you could touch the ground in that game, if I remember right. Uh, well, not, not only that, but yeah. I, I was going to mention the opposite, which is that you could web-swing off the sky. Anything, it's, yeah. It, well, no, the sky. <laughs> Yeah, like yeah. so, like because the the realism wasn't the point. It's like yeah, you're you're going across the city. It's fine. So it was <laughs> it was cool to see like a different Green Goblin story and everything. But Spider Man Two came out and everything just exploded. It was like the map of New York, obviously with some stuff removed. Even the PS4 version has some stuff removed. But it's like a decent New York map. You swing off of things. The movement was the actual web swinging upgraded. itself was was, was was unparalleled at the time. Yeah, you weren't just holding the swing button and pointing a direction like you're flying a Superman or something. Like you're you're actually taking care at where you are swinging off of what you are attaching your webs to. Like like the PS4 game, the the movement wasn't as insane as the PS4 version got, of course, but it was spectacular for its time. And just the idea that you're doing all these side missions. There's so much to do outside of the story. Um, you could zip up walls instead of just climb them. That felt pretty cool, too, because I can't think of many games where you could do that before. These kind of games are very much like uh, established this ga- the sort of superhero open-world games, like later games. Game yeah, I can I can easily agree with that. What, no. I was quick, quickly wanted to say about like games like Infamous and Prototype and Later oh yeah, one hundred percent yeah yeah Infamous basically is like Spider Man Two except you're a, an original character. <laughs> yeah, and... I I really love Infamous. I I thought they did a great job with the first two games. Instead, I never played anything past that. But instead I, I really of webs, you, you you are the electric spider. Pretty much, yeah. 
But uh, note, yeah, note, I side note that apparently they are they really found a species of spider that uses uh, some sort of electric charge in its. Oh, life. neat! <laughs> I know there's one that um like can like is it kind of swims and like survives off of air bubbles. Oh, that's the so... uh, diving belt spider, or yeah, that's uh, really neat. <laughs> not either. What is that? What is that animal? Uh, Otter spider, I think it's called. That no, don't. That, that may be just a Hungarian name. Yeah. Well, um, really, really great movie, and uh, absolutely worth your time. The next movie is probably not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I forgot to say what the Oscar was for. It was for visual effects. Um, Spider Man Two uh, had some. Uh, that that Spider Man series in general had some pioneering um, like camera work. Um, yeah, with that, the web swinging. Yeah, they actually like swung uh, like camera around in the way that like Spider Man would be swinging. Yeah, they um, had some like first person and very close to the person third person swinging sequences, so it felt like you were on some kind of like theme park ride or something. It was great. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that that that's what they wanted for, and uh, it deserved it for sure. Uh, and moving on, uh, Blade Trinity, which won and was nominated for no Oscars. Uh, yeah, that movie's not very the, good. Uh, probably the worst of the Blade trilogy. Um, I, oh, no, I certainly. have to say. Yeah. Certainly. Uh, it has I moments. See it. I've seen one and two, but I didn't see three. Yeah, three's not I've very seen. good. I mean, you get to watch Mark, Ryan Reynolds being Mark. Ryan Reynolds if you care about that. Ryan Reynolds had been playing Deadpool many roles before he actually played Deadpool, and this is one of them. Where he's just a yeah. snarky Lantern, Ryan Reynolds man. Don't talk about Green Lantern. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, even in Green Lantern, he had that, like, sass about him, but he, like, he really leaned into it in Blade Trinity, because that was more of his character. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've never seen it, so I, I don't have I much have to say not... about it. Well, yeah, Wesley Snipes was not, like, really particularly happy to be there. There was a lot of focus on the not-Blade character with these, I think, what, I think they were called Night Stalkers. Uh, the villain of the movie is Dracula. Um, who is a Marvel yeah. character? I'm sorry. <laughs> Dracula, who is a Marvel character? Yeah, Marvel character. He is uh, the Take House of true. Dracula comics. Um, yeah, yeah, from the um, 60s. One thing from, I I will 50s, give a bit of a shout out to though is that there like one of the the villains in the movie uh, is played by the wrestler Triple H, and he he just looks like he's having fun. He's one of the more entertaining parts about the movie, like him and Ryan Reynolds, and they even have a fight scene together. So go figure. Yeah, Jessica Beals in this movie, which I didn't realize. Oh, awesome. Yeah, she's on Ryan Reynolds' team. Uh, well, I don't know whose team it is, but they're on the same team. Yeah, I um, yeah, I'm, I'm Natasha Leone, really? <laughs> Natasha Leone's in this movie. <laughs> I didn't realize that. <laughs> I don't recognize the name. Um, you you know that tweet that I tweet every Thursday? Thursday, what a concept. Okay. Uh, that that's her. <laughs> uh, she was in Orange Is the New Black, most probably. And um, in in uh, uh, what, what she was in Scary Movie too. Jesus Christ, I didn't know that. She's she's also like um, the girlfriend of uh, Fred Armiston uh, currently. So I don't know. I mean, like I, I like maybe she's one of the two vampire siblings where she has yeah. the, the 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 cute little dog or whatever. Maybe that's her. I'm not a hundred percent. Yeah, I, I probably. But yeah. yeah, yeah, she she's she's pretty famous in in, in Russian Doll, uh, which is a uh, 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 pretty um, awesome Netflix show. It, it's basically uh, kind of like Groundhog Day, like the same ha- events happen over and over again, but like like slightly differently. Like people keep disappearing from her huh. um, from the reality every day that repeats. So it it happens differently in that regard, um, but yeah, yeah, that's that's a that, that was an in, a really interesting show. Um, but we have to move on. We have to do some more here. Uh, so after Blade, what we have is another bona fide classic, the spinoff of Daredevil, of Ben Affleck's Daredevil. Oh, Electra. Uh, Electra, which might be the probably the worst movie in here i haven't I, seen that one but i've heard nothing uh, but it's not worse than howard the duck but it's it's really bad um yeah no this is bad um it it's just you know what the worst part about it is it's boring 
it's a really boring superhero movie. Um, <laughs> you know, based off of a character that has a lot of potential that had great, you know, great stories in the comics. It's 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 really a shame. Um, and Daredevil wasn't that bad. Uh, I know people rag on it, but honestly, I, yeah, if you I go back to movie. it. It's not that bad. Um, I, I think it's a pretty decent effort, honestly. Um, moving on from that, um, <laughs> I never saw this one either, but uh, the, the Jessica Alba Fantastic Four and uh, yeah, Chris I've Evans. Never seen, I've never seen any of the Fantastic Four movies, and there's, Same, I think, four of them now. Like, any time they tried to make it, it was terrible, because they managed to screw up one aspect of it was what... Well, I, I, the, the funny thing is, I think each iteration of the Fantastic Four movies was made to, like, save the rights to the Fantastic Four. Like, the Roger Corman yeah. movie was... Maybe not this one. Uh, maybe, maybe maybe not the 2005 one. This was it not? I mean, Rise of the Silver Surfer obviously was not, but the 2005 one wasn't? I, I, I think I, this was a genuine, uh, a genuine attempt. Um, oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. because... Um, this this one made money. It was during this is during the heyday of superhero. Well, films, yeah, this is so. when we saw superhero movies and learned that we liked them. So maybe yeah. we will like this one too. Mm. I mean, it has good people, and it, I mean, uh, Jessica Alba, it has, Chris it has Evans, Chris fucking Evans, yeah, uh, <laughs> Mike, uh, Michael Chiklis. I mean, Ch- Michael Chiklis is one of the you know the um like the perfect choice for the thing at the time. I mean, come on. Um, so I mean, uh, I I've, I've never seen this movie, but uh. I, I think it's, um, you know, it, it's a shame. I mean, the Fantastic Four are just difficult to pull off correctly. Um, even in the comics, they, they uh, I think they don't even have a comic anymore. Or they, they <laughs> it, yeah, I, like, or, or they, yeah, I don't think they have a comic anymore. They kind because... of like part of, part of uh, sort of the universe. Yeah, they're very oh, yeah, they're important to the Marvel. I mean, they are basically the um, genesis of the of the modern Marvel universe. They were the first comic in the modern Marvel universe. Um, you know, uh, not not you know not including the timely comics, which they they folded into continuity. Uh, you know, the the Captain America and the original Human Torch and Namor stuff. But uh, yeah, I mean, the fan- Fantastic Four is just. Hot- I mean, the Rose Gallery, I mean, you have Doctor Doom, which is one of the best villains of all time, but Absolutely. for some reason, they 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 keep screwing him up. I mean, he is also the most comic booky comic book villain that you can think of. Well, well, that, well that's, um, the, that's the thing with him, is that the, yeah. mo- the movies never you, do You can't that. make him into a movie. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, you, you can, it's just that the movies take him, like, super seriously, where he... He is a threat, but he's the he's most... He's just a like, ridiculous person. <laughs> yeah, but the way he talks, like, you have not seen The Last of Doom? Like, it sounds like a stupid TV show, but, like, that's just... He's he most, still talks like that in the comics. He's the most <laughs> thespian villain in the ever in any comics ever. By, like, a mile. Yeah, like, he's yeah. Just, He's like he's like if if Fraser were evil. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh... I, I can kind of see that. I mean, Th- Fraser isn't like a showstopper, but Doom does have the pretentiousness. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you want a good version of Doctor Doom, Baron Underbite in uh, in, <laughs> in uh, With the Venture Brothers. Brothers. Yes, with his he, phantasm balls. He he is he is Doctor Doom, but like a funny version of him. Um, he he's really funny, uh, and he basically has the same backstory, like exactly the same. I I, I still love that one panel where he's dealing with Squirrel Girl, where squirrels are crawling all over him, and it's like his his dialogue is something like insane, like confound it, like for every one of these accursed creatures I throw off, two more come to vex me. It's like the greatest I, I, line. As ridiculous as Doctor Doom is as a character, he is he is a force to be feared in the Marvel universe. He's only been outright defeated. He, he's like defeat. He's defeated like like sideways all the time. Uh, because yeah, he's every so time powerful. every time you beat him, you just like thwart his plan, or the Doctor Doom you beat was like one of his robot clones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's only actually been defeated something like three times in the entire universe, <laughs> uh, and one of them was by Squirrel Girl. <laughs> Which yeah, is I mean, hilarious. no one beats Squirrel Girl. Uh, she's the un- uh, isn't she the invincible? Yeah, she's like the secret, girl? like most powerful character. No, I think no, I think no, her no. her comic book is called the Unbeatable Squirrel Girl or something like that. Nice. Yeah, yeah, which is 
awesome. I can't wait until they add her to the MCU. Oh um, God, that'll be the most boring <laughs> movie because she keeps winning. No, I mean, I mean, she, 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 uh, she no, she, she'll she, be in some other. Yeah, movie, she would have like real character moments, but like, like it, it's like One Punch Man. It's like, and then I punched him and I won. Like, okay, <laughs> well, she could be a character in 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 like yeah, she could show know. up or something. Yeah, in Deadpool three, very yeah, easily. I could I could easily yeah. see something goofy like that happening. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then you have one of the most disappointing movies uh, of of all all of this. Um, Spider Man Three or X Men Three? X Men Three. X Men uh, Three almost like X Men Three kind of killed X Men for a little while. X Men really rebounded because the fourth. Uh, well, no, the fourth movie is is Wolverine. Well, that was our, yeah, well, first yeah. first class was good. First class was good when they rebooted X Three. Um, man, it's rare that I'm disappointed by a movie in the theater. Like sometimes after I leave, it'll like sink in. Maybe it wasn't so good, yeah. but X Three, I was disappointed in the theater. Man, uh, it 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 was one of those like. Oh no! What did we what just watch? Kind of moments. It yeah. was that bad. Um, they kill off all the, almost all the characters uh, in it, um, including characters that they have to bring back later. Um, <laughs> that was always fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They allude to a Dark Phoenix saga that. Uh, well, no, no. They did. They did that in the second one. Never mind. Um, but yeah, well, yeah, the, yeah. No, the X three was this the, is Dark the Dark Phoenix. Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah. This is the the Dark Phoenix saga never works on on film. You know that well, it's, it's like in space and shit. Like they're not, they're not trying that. Yeah, I mean it is it is the most well known uh, X Men uh, story of all time, probably. But it doesn't work. Uh, like it just doesn't work um, in, in in movie form for you know for the reasons you just said. There's it, it, it takes place in space with the the Shi'ar and yep. like Gladiator and and a lot of it takes place in Ireland. <laughs> In yeah, the comic. <laughs> I remember seeing that in the cartoon. I remember like there were there've only like there were not many moments in the cartoon that made me actually drop my jaw, but Gladiator was one of them. Cause in, in the cartoon, cause yeah. Juggernaut just walks up to him and just slugs him in the chest, and nothing happens. And Mister Reed yeah. and I were like, oh, cause like <laughs> Juggernaut's whole thing is he's unstoppable. That's what a Juggernaut is. And Gladiator just tanks a punch room, and we're like, "Whoa!" <laughs> the Gladiator is, is is basically Marvel's Superman, uh, and yeah. like he, he, he's like, I was going to say he's an alien Superman, but that also yeah, Superman is alien. Superman, <laughs> Superman is an alien. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, he's like an alien Goku. Oh wait, um, uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, this this was also the first movie that like actively referenced a meme that i can think of like that like, made uh, me mad that made me super mad in the theater yeah, uh, on the juggernaut it, bitch I, oh, yeah. I was pissed off also the version that version of the juggernaut is so goddamn lame and they didn't go into his backstory at all i mean the, the reason why the juggernaut sucks is that he's he's professor xavier's um half brother no step brother step brother um, excuse me he, like abusive stepbrother who comes back to abuse him in the future, uh, in in present day, but as a super powerful, um, like you know, muscle man, and yeah. he's just a jerk. He has no m- motivation other than he's just a piece of shit, uh, um, and has been, um, so like it it it, he it also really has terrible puns. Yeah, he he um he he's really lame in this movie. Uh, they also try to do. Um, kind of a preamble to 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 apocalypse. I think in this movie, don't they? Um, I, ooh, I, I don't remember. Yeah, because he, I I think angels in this movie, right? Yes, he and, is. Yes, he is. And An- Angel is most was an original X Man, but he's most famous for yeah, being um, like Archangel for apocalypse. For becoming yeah, become becoming Archangel by being turned by apocalypse, uh, becoming one of his his original first horseman, uh, four horsemen. So, um, cool. it makes me think of like the Sam group. Raimi Spider-Man movies. They mentioned Doc Connors here and there as one of Parker's teachers. And then the lizard never happens like until amazing Spider-Man, Spider-Man one. Yeah, yeah. Until the, until the trilogy just wrapped up and that was it. And then a different yeah. director was like, I'll do it. Yeah. Um, uh, and then 
I think we should probably move on after this next one because we we yes uh, we need to have a, an ample amount of time to talk about Spider-Man three. <laughs> yeah, although there there is one thing though that I'll add about X three <clears throat> that um I saw comments about online that yeah this was really stupid. There's a part because you know how Rogue's whole thing is that her life sucks because she can't touch she anybody because they'll like yeah. die at worst. But there's a part where like you know where they were distributing like a like a drug that would remove people's mutant powers and that could be dangerous because they could forcibly use that on mutants they don't like to depower them. And Rogue was thinking, well, this is good for me. Like my my powers are cursed. Like this fucking sucks. So she was considering getting the uh, the injection. And Storm was like, "No, Rogue. Like, it, like we we have what we have because we're gifted. Our powers are blessing. You need to realize that." And it's like, I mean, she was basically a god in Africa. Yeah, uh, you for, can fly and control the yeah. fucking weather. Rogue can't touch anyone or they fucking die. Like, sit down. She's an alpha level mutant. Uh, Storm yeah, is an alpha like, level. She has mutant. like zero disadvantages regarding her powers. Like. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, I could fly, but only short distances. Like, she has no disadvantages. She can literally manipulate the weather at will. And Rogue can't touch anybody. Not only that, but, like, she can help other people with it. <laughs> yes. Like, like, and like... R- Rogue, it, like, her powers have ruined her life. <laughs> and Storm's giving her a lecture on, like, no, mutant powers are good. <laughs> like, well, yours is good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are other people that have, like, secondary mutations that completely make them into freaks. Like, uh, you know, like, Beast or... Um, like, there, there, are, uh, like, there are plenty that have, like, deformities because of their, uh, like, Angel hates his powers because he doesn't want his wings. Yeah, um, and, like, I, I mean, and not yeah. only is there the whole, like, thing with, like, the, the discrimination against mutants, but, like, even assuming everybody was cool with it, just having those wings sucks. <laughs> he has annoying. to keep them, he has, they literally go over that in the original X-Men comics, he has to... He has to keep them in a harness, and it's really uncomfortable. It's a pain for him in the ass. Like, it's like yeah. it's like Wolverine's claws. How they had to install those things on his gloves because, like, even the first X Men movie touched this. Whenever he, he extends his claws, he's like he's cutting, cutting through his, his own hands. hand. Yeah, yeah. Like blades are coming out of him. Like, what do you want? Yeah, his gloves uh, have basically like um, like an IV port in them for for his. Yeah, his, so he doesn't uh, harm himself every time he does anything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I mean. It's crazy, but uh, this this last one that we'll go over um, is uh, Ghost Rider with with Nicholas Cage. Gage. Oh man, you know this what? Was, like this one's not right. that bad. All right, this, yeah. yeah, this one's not that bad. Actually. Even if you weren't really a fan, you could still watch Nick Cage being Nick Cage. It's just fun. It's Drive Angry, but with a flaming skull. Um, I, pr- I prefer Drive Angry, but like. Yeah, all yeah. right, all right, all right. Drive Angry is, is a is fantastic. Oh, <laughs> you have to admit yeah, uh, that, but, that that movie's really good. Half of the time, Nicolas Cage has his flaming skull on, so they don't have to see him grimacing all the time. Which is oh, almost a shame, because on one hand, flaming skulls are awesome, but on the other hand, seeing Nick Cage just go ham is kind of why you're here. Yeah, yeah, it's kind but, of like well, like well, why are you covering up Willem Dafoe's face? It's already like yeah, it can, to, come on, he's the best. But oh no, exaggerate. one thing I want to point out by the way, just regarding Drive Angry, this is a tangent. There was a point, uh, Vice, when you were living like at your parents' place, where you were showing me the movie Shoot 'Em Up with oh, with Clive Owen and Paul. Giamatti. Love that movie. Yeah, and there's there's a scene early on where you were like just waiting for it, You're like oh man, Lotus, wait for this scene. You won't believe your eyes when you get to this scene. And there's a scene where Clive Owen is having sex with a woman while gunmen are attacking him. And, like, while he's with having Monica sex Bellucci, with her... No, not Monica Bellucci, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, and while he's having sex with her, he's, like, spinning around and firing back at them, in like, in slow motion. And you're like, can you believe how wild this scene is? And I was like, oh, I've seen this before. In it, Drive like, Angry. Yeah, in Drive Angry, where he's also <laughs> drinking. <laughs> Believe it or not, there are two movies where someone is having a gunfight while having sex in relative slow motion. <laughs> which which is, re- reminds me of the, the description of Golgo 13, like, in the in the, in the the manga that I read <laughs> yeah, to at one yeah. time. Is he's... he's He's uh, unaffected, uh, like his libido is completely un- unaffected by like 
da- the danger that's going on. That's such <laughs> like, like a, yeah, that's such like a kitty, like a under, like, cool thing was character, write. like kind of thing to do. <laughs> he, he has an imp- he, he has the ultimate boner that can <laughs> can't be um, fucking absurd. It, it can't it can't be phased by being shot. That at. like allow me to do, do my time again. That sounds incredibly Duke Nukem. Well, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the the Go Go Thirteen manga is just so so fucking childish. Like I like, the, I, the I have it with, right here. The thing with Duke Nukem is that like he's kind of a joke. Like he's badass, but it's also like we know what we're like, doing. He's a caricature, obviously, but he's and, a like Go Go Thirteen. I think is serious. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I it's it's so it's so funny. I I just really I really love the description of that. If I I, I should read it on air one of these days if I have it if I have it um, you yeah, know brought up. But it's like it, it's it's so stupid. You're just like, why would you even write this? Like you don't you don't have to. I'm already impressed. <laughs> like by the by the way, going going back to Ghost Rider, one thing I'm disappointed they didn't expand because like again, this is pre MCU, so if you're going to expand something, it has to be a sequel to your own movie. But the bad guy was Blackheart, like son of the devil. Like, yeah, and Peter that, Fonda that's... is the devil in it. M- M- Mephisto, he's Mephisto in this. Yeah, like we have we have the devil, <laughs> like just like in a Marvel movie. <laughs> Well, I, I think they're going to bring him into Loki, uh, which I'm Fair kind enough. of excited and about. And by the way, this is getting a little ahead of it, uh, of, of our discussion, but I think, this is a weird one, I think Ghost Rider 2 had Carrion, whom I'd like never even heard of outside of oh, one the of the can- goons. Oh, the cancer that mutant? Up. Yeah, like he's, he's like, I'd never heard of him before or since Maximum Carnage. <laughs> And then he's in Ghost Rider 2. I'm like, what? Rebel Wilson is in this movie? Was she like 12? Jesus. Yeah, I don't even know. Wow. Anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, this... <laughs> oh, also, Ghost Rider has Sam Elliott, so that's cool. Because Sam Elliott's yeah. cool in anything. I mean, wasn't this movie, like, filmed in... Oh, it was... I, I know the second one was filmed in, like... Uh, in Eastern Bloc country, I think. Um, like I, I don't know. I've only like seen that. clips of either movie. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I've, uh, I, I've either seen seen either of them. But um, I know that the most modern Ghost Rider is really cool. Um, he has like a a like a four, uh, Pontiac Thunderbird. Um, yeah, like... that's that's the thing. As cool as Ghost Rider is, he's very he's very of the time. Like he's got the, yeah. the the cool leather jacket, the motorcycle. He's got yeah. chains. It's, so it's very nineties. His update is much sleeker, um, and he's also a, a different. He's not Johnny Blaze anymore. He's a different, yeah. uh, a different have, have guy. Was best on. Yeah. yeah, the mantle was. Uh, have you ever seen that one comic picture Robbie of like, Ray Ghost Riders yeah. across the ages, where one of them has those one of those old timey bikes with a giant front wheel? Like, <laughs> a it's, penny it's, farthing. He has yeah, a penny with, like, farthing. The, Flaming with it's great. <laughs> that's just stupid. Yeah, well, well, yeah, I think it was supposed to be a joke because that's not like you're not going to catch will. up to somebody with that. Well, well I think obviously. the ori- the original incarnation has a horse, which yeah, you know so. just makes sense. Yeah, um, well, yeah, Sam Elliott had that in the Ghost Rider movie. He was like the previous yeah. one. He had the flaming horse, which looks super badass. Yeah, no, that Let's that ride. makes sense because he just looks like the headless horseman, basically. You know. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Um. All right, well, well, we'll just cut it off there because Spider-Man Three is it, it might even deserve its entire, yeah, that, <laughs> an that's entire <a> episode. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, X- X-Men: Last Last Stand was like the first one of these movies to be too ambitious, try way too many storylines, and and then just fuck up because it it does too many things. But uh, it just Spider-Man up Three is Professor X. <laughs> it, Spider-Man Three is that and more. It's just it. It's a travesty. Uh, it, it and coming f- and Sam Raimi directed it, and he's one of my favorites. He he hates it too, though. So let's well, yeah, because just... <laughs> studio meddling. He n- he never wanted to make it, um, and he didn't get to make it the way he wanted to anyway. So um, it's yeah, but we'll we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Uh, we should do fan stuff here, Lotus. Yeah. So th- this will be quick. We have uh, a couple comments, both from Living Corpse. One of them is. Plumbers Don't Wear Ties is about the journey, not the climax. Uh, on one hand, you're right. On the other hand, fuck that game. I'm done. 
Um, <laughs> and then the other comment, of course, corpse killer is bad. It's about killing me. Oh, he's living corpse. You don't want to do that. Be very careful with corpse killer. <laughs> That's it. That's all I've got. <laughs> now for the question, uh, we do not have any fan submitted questions, unfortunately. So I submitted one of my own. So, uh, I forgot if we've covered this one before, but whatever. We can do a refresher. And Trichologist is here, too. What are your favorite Game Over screens? And I don't necessarily mean, like, a still image. It could, like, what's your favorite Game Over screen, sequence, whatever it is? Uh, the, uh, the Ninja Gaiden okay. arcade game. <laughs> 100%. Oh, the continue screen with the buzzsaw? Yeah. yeah uh, and then he, then eventually it catching up to him. Yeah, instead um, of blacking, instead of fading the black, but, it fades the red. But not only that, but, like, all of the bad guys are in the background, like, watching it. like as Yeah, it, and, like, as all the final happened. fights had, like, danger countdowns like that, too. Double Dragon yeah. Neon had a funny countdown where he's going to do the poke your eyes thing and you block him with the Three uh, Stooges block. <laughs> that is, that that's the second best one because it's just that good. But uh, Final Fights is really fun, too, because it, it has the... It has the dynamite. And, yeah, there's a uh, dynamite, there's yeah. rising water, there's, a th I don't know, th whatever the third one was. <laughs> yeah, I, I forget. Hmm. I mean, uh, the Resident Evil ones are like, game over. <laughs> oh, wait, no, I'm that's uh, Castlevania. Uh, yeah, sorry. I was like, excuse I'm me. Sorry. Like, Resident Evils are quite famous, because, like, you, they you subverted game You're over. dead. You, yeah, you are dead. You are dead, yeah. Although I think Resident Evil Survivor 2 actually says game over, where it's like, okay, fine. Yeah, I, I really like that one in Castlevania Symphony of the Night. It has like that thing like, let, let's go out for a night, and all that kind of stuff at the bottom. Yeah. I forget what it says exactly. but um... you, know, you know what's a good classic one, by the way, is uh, Friday the 13th, you and your friends are dead, game over. <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh, That's no, pretty you know, grim. You, you know what's good? Uh, uninvited. Cause it, it was oh, like, the Scarlet O'Hara, like yeah, yeah, death like, face. Because there, there's like I mean, there, there's a generic game over screen when you die, but like it's more about the screen that describes how you die. It's like yeah, you you talk to the woman, she turns around and ah, oh, she's a skeleton. But then it's like then she starts tearing you apart, and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> like this is a Nintendo game, <laughs> and I think the description's a little more graphic on PC. How about you, that 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 uh, one where they're going? You are dead. You oh, total, dead. Total, dead. total, total distortion. I think. Total distortion. I think it was. Yes, there's. A, it's a full song. It's great. Oh, you know what's a fun one? Uh, Sega Rally Championship. Game over. Yeah. Oh well, no, that's uh, that's Daytona USA. Um, Daytona. Okay. That, uh, and I, I've always been fond of Metal Gear Solid with like Vaping screaming. Snake, 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 snake. snake. Yeah. You know what's also a fun one? Uh, oh. Snake. You've created a time paradox. Yeah, that's a good one. That's um, like that was earth shattering for its time. For Catherine, love is over. That one. That's. Oh, crazy. I forgot yeah. about that one. Love is over. I for, I can't believe I forgot that. I mean, I haven't played the game, but that's an iconic screen. Yeah, uh, the, the Symphony of the Night. Let's uh, let us go out this evening for pleasure. The night is still young. And it has oh, that's pretty good. You know, that's pretty good. There. Uh, Dirk the Daring turning into a fucking skeleton. Um. Yeah, any of his death sequence. I mean, so if you if you want to go that direction, like every single bad end in Corpse Party, because some of those get really messed up. Like some of those are oh, uncomfortable. Please. Yeah, the, some uh... of those are just unpleasant. <clears throat> There's one where you're just slowly being buried alive, and it's just like, it's it's just unnerving. There's no visuals. It's <laughs> just unnerving. <laughs> I do like the little Mac uh, give up retire screen. That oh, one. that's pretty good actually. That's really yeah, you're just iconic. On the like, oh, yeah, mm, damn it. It, it. And the the music that plays makes you very depressed. You're like, oh shit. Nah. I also kind of like the Street Fighter Two countdown where when you do continue, you get that like sparkle in your eye, like ah, oh, I'm ready to go again. <laughs> actually, you, you know what one really stuck with me? I had forgotten about it when I had first played it on on PS2, but. When I let's played it, I was reminded. <clears throat> uh, Rule of Rose. I don't know if you're familiar with that game over screen, but it just really struck me. Because Rule of Rose is like... I mean, it's a survival horror title, but it's framed as a story. Because the whole game is like you reliving your memories. So it opens with like a narrator, like, once upon a time. 
there was a precious little girl and I, like it, it's done very storybooky and when you start new chapters there's like a piece of chalk writing on a chalkboard like the name of the chapter and it's something fantastical which you can infer from the occurrences of the chapter if that makes sense but what really got me is that the game's super depressing your character feels like shit all the time and is shit on by everyone all the time so if you die the game over screen gets the voiceover back like and they all lived happily ever after and i was like that's <laughs> fucked up <laughs> it's just like it's just miserable uh let uh, me see yeah pick, pick, the, pick a couple what? of drakeologists uh just the, the tongue of tink of the binding of Isaac, oh missile command the like, end <laughs> oh hey, yeah hello, today I'm i was dead. killed I'm by killed. yeah killed. i forgot I'm about killed that. by i inherit like uh -huh. i leave my I, they, they stop, who stop, I Let me find. see here. Yeah, to go uh, be the cat. Uh, Drake yeah, Colleges. I was killed by like this jerk or whatever, and it's a drawing of whatever enemy you died by. Monster. And there is some in uh, Emmy Davil. Well, it's not a, really a game over screen, Chuck. It, it just like flash, just shows you like whenever you die, if you like, depending how you die, it's still like if you fall down, you like crushed, or if you get blown up, or splattered. And one of my okay. favorites, if you run into accidents, you run into your own black hole, then it's obliterated. Nice. Actually, that kind of reminds mm. me of, um, like, Grand Theft Auto, just wasted. It's not full-on game over, because you could always just yeah. like, respawn, but, like, but, yeah. Uh, how about the, the game over uh, screen for Cadillacs and Dinosaurs? It's similar to the Final Fight one, but, like, the bad guy in the game just, like, fucking shoots you in the face. Um, wow. I don't yeah, know if I've seen that. Yeah, and it's in first person, so it's just like, oh god. Oh, wow. so that's how they got away with that. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. was like, how that just really <laughs> fucking shoots you in the face. Yeah, damn. Yeah, death sequences, death sequences in Doom sixteen, and your monster, you yes. get you get repented. You you know what's a good one is when you die in the foundry and you do the Terminator two thumbs up as you sink into the <laughs> yeah, the, I the, love the, that the slag. Yeah. Well, Resident Evil 4 fucking death sequences. Like, if you get killed by the vomiting bugs, that's like the worst death sequence I've seen uh, in the game in a while. Uh, the, the, the chainsaw guys, for me. Uh, the chainsaw is rough, so but visceral. have you seen the bugs vomiting on you? No, I haven't your seen that Your fucking one. face is melts off. You can see part of your skull. It's it's like, it's awful. Uh, in that case, uh, again, dead space. Because every monster is yeah. in a different way. Dead space is awful ugly like do you remember that one little creature that climbs into you and then like just takes over your body and you start walking around like a zombie it's like system shock one <laughs> that's an amazing game over sequence by the way when you like get something injected into your brain and you see the little electricity going through you and you're like Rrr, and then you just get put into like a like a, a four-legged like spider robot body so your human legs are just dangling uselessly and the spider robot is just walking around with you hanging from it like that that's fucked um if we're, we're talking just about video game deaths in general um uh, probably my favorite uh like series of video game deaths has to be heart of darkness just because of yeah. how just how cruel it is to a child but um, it's done like, in a cartoonish way where it's fucked up but it's not like visceral but you're still like ooh. ooh. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it, it's, is... especially the grubs grabbing him and like bringing him into the into all yes. their hole that, that yeah, one where really his legs are kicking me. and all of a sudden there's like a and he gets stiff for a second his legs drop and you're like whoa mm. <laughs> there's, there's yeah. like zero violence but you know you know it's in what were you saying uh there is a good uh, um, amusing in amusing game war sequence in the game Extreme G2, which is a racing game where, where sure. you like this sort of this Tron futuristic motorbikes which are goes like at max max one speed. And if you like playing championship and you don't make the roster, like your character seen like shaking it, shaking its head, standing on this sort of floating plinth, kicks the bike, like kicks kicks his her bike start jumping around because his foot hurt hurt their foot falls oh, off the plane great. falls off the plane then the plane tips because the bike is heavy and the bike just falls falls down off the screen that's amazing oh by the uh, by the way if we're going with just just straight up death sequences mentioning heart of darkness where like the violence is like cruel but you don't see too much of it i just remembered a really good one from uh from king's quest 6 
there's a bit where you're in the catacombs and when you there's a part where you fall into a trap door and drop to the second floor which is supposed to happen but you land in a room of pitch darkness so they represent your character by just two pixels one for each of the the whites of your eyes so it's just two dots on the screen that are your eyes so if you move around you see just your eyes moving around that's all you get you're supposed to bring the tinder box with you to light up the room so then you can light up some torch and then see the door and then leave but if you don't have the tinder box or for some reason you don't light it you'll just hear like sounds in the background like "Uh uh-oh i think like the monster in the labyrinth is getting closer maybe you should do something player this is your big chance and if you don't eventually something comes into the room not that you can see it and you you get into a scuffle so you see your eyes kind of just like moving all over the place like whoa 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 but like you can't see what's happening but then you hear kind of a rip sound and like the two dots that are your eyes fall down but like they fall away from each other implying you were like cut in half or something you just see like two little squares just drop in like different directions and you're like whoa Mm -hmm. so like that's that's fantastic uh one thing about it like in leap of fate a sort of roguelite game where in the first time if you like get game or game over like you're the sort of character that welcomes you into the whole sort of arena you are you, uh, you are ascending across it basically goes up to your body like snaps its fingers and turns you into like one of the uh, sort of minor enemies of the game like Ooh. oh well better luck Brutal. next time that sucks <laughs> makes me think of just when you die in the mummy demastered like you're gonna have to go find your previous explorer body guy and kill, and kill him yeah same goes with Zombie U, actually. It's not really so much a death sequence, it's just that, like, oh, you died, but, like, you're gonna have to find uh, so, like, you one of the, later. What was that game? Of, there was this point, weird point-and-click uh, uh, game that was made by, like, this very weird, like... They, wasn't, they, were, they weren't even a, a game company. They were, like, I think, like, more, they more specialized in, like, peripherals. But they made a game where you, like, trying to solve a sort of this mystery on an island with a little remote controlled robot and like you can actively destroy you can up very easily destroy yourself and like oh well whatever happens whatever was causing those that radiation spike has now gone super like super critical and just really blows up the entire planet and it's very <laughs> soft spoken like you have this uh, soft spoken general character who is like like the drone is has been destroyed. Apology. Excuse me while I spend the, my last of my time with my family. Ugh. Wow, rubbing it in. <laughs> that kind oh. of reminds me of a uh, harvester, where there's that one um, general guy or whatever rank he is who had lost the lower half of his body, and he's just standing on like he's lifting himself up with his hands, but he's like over a dead man switch, and if you mess certain things up, he'll just drop on the switch and just the whole town blows up like game over hey guys awesome. i i found the 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 golgo 13 thing. oh god <laughs> <laughs> this is written in an official golgo 13 volume 2 from viz media from uh the early 2000s uh golgo's erection is so powerful that he has been observed to maintain it even when interrupted by the police mid quotes so dumb. <laughs> He's been like... observed to maintain it. <laughs> it's so funny. There's an entire like dossier on on his sexual. Logo, put habits. that away. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I'm the job, can't Logo. Come on, uh, put the weapon down. Like... I can't. <laughs> interesting. Interesting. Like. You played Shadow Man uh, uh, Lotus, right? Oh, yeah. And did you know that if you get, like, if you get kill, kill, killed in that game, you are just basically put back to the one of the starting points? Yeah. And did you know that if you get killed by Legion during the fight, any of the, any of the areas, then you get a special, like, death, sec- death sequence? I do not think I knew that. Like, if you get killed by Legion, like the last boss, 
like he, he actually the, there's an actual like uh, oh no that, that. I, I think I have seen that actually yeah I think you I think you deliberately made made one made uh, like you shown shown that off yeah where like that that medium is like oh no like you know everything's everything's gone to hell this is us. yeah and the yeah. army of, army of monsters are marching into the world yes the monsters that are so powerful that when you kill them they stay dead because they drop dark souls yeah an army of those have fun <laughs> yeah. wow yeah, what else? oh and by like... the way just because i i beat it recently on stream Fear effect has some. I mean, there are generic death sequence. Like when you die, you just kind of fall down as yeah, nothing. But it's... like, there are some cinematic death sequences. Some of those are brutal. Yeah. I, speaking of Dead Space, um, we probably will have good reason to talk about Dead Space uh, very soon. Um, I, I think um, Dead Space is is going to get a revival. Um, um, and uh, there's a, there's some credible rumors going around that they're they're about to announce um, like a, uh, a, a trilogy remastering. Um, okay. So that would be really awesome. You, like bits of visceral apparently making another game like some sort of. I would love uh, that death... because I I I think like Dead Space one and two are like just fantastic games. So there even is, th like... even three is quite good. It's just different. One yeah. I don't know. I don't remember suddenly the name. Some sort of like. That's a phony project or something. Well, I mean, something, some sort of title. I don't remember the name on the top of my head, but apparently, like, we saw some people who managed to escape from E8 formed a separate, like, development team and are making a Dead Space like game. Nice. All right. Well, um, any other final ones that you would wish to go over before we wrap this up? This is probably all I got. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, it, it doesn't get much better than than the the Ninja Gaiden one. Uh, well, it, to be it's honest, just like, so good. Just a, a topic on this, like we like modern games don't have game too much game awards. Yeah, like, because you 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 die over and over and over again, and it, no, you don't have much of a penalty. Yeah, like yeah. the game flow has been essentially being made better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like the Demon Souls, you just die and then quickly reset back. I mean, like I mean, you you it, die to start the game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it it's it's one of those things. I I think mm -hmm. it, you know, death is just a minor inconvenience now, and it used to be you know the loss of your money, uh, of mm -hmm. your chance yeah, to play. The, the game was game. over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Game over, man. Game over. Um, but uh, yeah, I. I I think you know. I I still would like like uh, the main character to be um, completely torn apart, <laughs> like every once in a while though. If, if oh, don't worry. You can, there are games like that. Yeah. Just play Sierra point and click adventure games. <laughs> yeah, right. You get murdered by the Roomba. All right, well, uh, that is going to be the show for this week. We want to thank all of our fans who contributed questions. Oh, you're welcome. I'm looking at you, Lotus Prince. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Please keep us supplied with awesome topics by submitting questions of your own via the YouTube and SoundCloud pages. While there, please give us thumbs-ups, likes, and five-star ratings on iTunes. Helps promote and spread awareness of the show, and any bit of encouragement helps keep the show going. You can also catch us on Tuesdays for our sister podcast, Reactive Consciousness, the in-depth look at this week in our lives. Finally, you can friend me as Vice the Bold on pretty much anything. Just give me a heads up. Let me know who you are and how you know me. And you can follow me on my YouTube channel, Lotus Prince. You can hit me up on Twitter, at, at Lotus Prince. And finally, if you are interested in seeing my videos early, getting in on exclusive live streams, selecting upcoming games for me to Let's Play, or get in conversations with me and other patrons on Discord, then perhaps consider swinging by my Patreon account, which can be found at patreon.com slash Lotus Prince. And you can find me on Skype, Discord, and on Steam under the name Dracologist. All right, we will catch you on Tuesday for another episode of Reacted Then. Until next time, everyone. Bye. Good evening.